Hello, dear listener. So I've got some things to say about Americans. Because I brought up a millennial and it caused a bit of a kerfuffle with Yanks, as it almost always does when I appear on a show with Americans and this topic gets brought up. Why do I want to distance European activism away from the American movement? And why do I want to be away from America in general? Well, I think I should explain a little bit. Also for my own sake, to be honest, because... At this point, my hatred of Yanks has become completely irrational. If you were to wave a US flag at me, it'd be like waving a cape at a bull. I'd be liable to tear it apart. So, I need to deal with that as well. My dislike of them verges on the deranged. So, I'm going to give this rant about it. And then from then on, I'm going to try and stuff my autism away about the Yanks and talk about this less. Now, about the America in general, I mean, there's the obvious things like the cultural imperialism, the hegemony of the Fed, dominance of the American business cycle and worldwide economics, their military aggression for dubious reasons, etc. But most people will know these things. I've mentioned these things many times before, and it's obvious even to many Americans that the American culture and their hegemony over the world is a very bad thing and a big promoter of degeneracy and the problems we have worldwide. So I'm not telling anyone anything new by saying that. So that's not really what I'm going to talk about. What I want to focus on is the American movement in general, because one of the things they always say is, we should work together. Uh, We're all brothers. We're all white. Uh, We're all nationalists. We need to work together. The, The mentality of petty nations is over. I agree to an extent. I think we should work together in Europe, but this is why I'm going to talk about the American movement. For anyone to work together, there's an arrangement needs to be mutually beneficial. And what does the American movement have to offer exactly? So you've got Greg Johnson, Countercurrents, pretty good website. But they also published this book about my little po- my little nationalist pony, I think it's called whose author actively promotes homosexuality. And then Greg Johnson in the last few years has actively defended homosexuals being in a movement and actually actively defends the lifestyle. And Greg Johnson is also a big fan of internet drama. Now, granted, Greg Johnson isn't really the worst example of this. And Countercurrents is a pretty good website, even though I would say that they have really declined and f- started focusing way too much on current events and pop culture, not enough about high culture or promoting new ideas. But anyway... But then you've got other figures. Nick Fuentes. Just an immature guy hurling abuse at everyone and calling everything cringe. And then he likes to associate with people wearing tutus sucking on dildos. Don't know why people like this guy. Then you've got Heimbach and the TWP. Need I say more than cockbox? Then you've got TRS who seem to be checking under their bed for Jews daily. And when they don't find any Jews, this is only proof of how hell hidden the Jewish conspiracy is. These guys are just a cult at this point on the internet who think think everyone not part of their little group are icky strangers who need to get with the message and otherwise go away. They're not productive. They don't add anything. They're actively a detriment. And the same goes for something like the Daily Stormer, who are pretty much like TRS, but even more contrarian. And then on the slightly more verging on the on the sort of MAGA tier halfway to nationalism thing, you've got the kill stream, which is an alcoholic yelling racial slurs who passes out during his own live streams. And that's the one of the biggest streamers. So the whole American movement is sort of a variety show, but every act is clowns. The only person I would introduce to friends and say, Oh well this is an American who spreads our message is Jared Taylor. He's a respectable figure. I'd invite Jared Taylor to, to, to any event, but I can't really think of that many others. And this is not me strawmanning the American movement. Those groups I mentioned, these are the pillars of the American movement. These are the biggest website and they're the biggest streamers and the biggest podcasts. And the vast majority of figures that I've seen in the American movement are lunatics like this. Just think of Christopher Cantwell, think of Patrick Little, think of Atom Waffen. These are all American groups. Normal people in America where the nationalist or traditionalist message do exist but they are much smaller and they don't seem to set the agenda. What I see in online discussions is always the drama mongers, cringe posters and wignats who are setting the tone for the conversation, who are bringing up the new talking points. 
for example, go to see the guests on Millennial, who I would consider generally being sensible people who have a message. Otherwise, Millennial Awards would invite them on. These are either fairly small channels with under 50,000 subs, or they're not even Americans. And to be honest, this isn't just about the American nationalist movement. American political thinking is generally quite insane. You know, you've got the SJWs and bread tube types. You've got the libertarian cringe thing with naked people dancing on stage and thinking, you know, legalized nukes or whatever. You've got Q boomers, etc. And all of that gets exported over here. All of these ideas from, from all over the political spectrum gets brought over here. There's BLM, BLM and Q talking points in the Netherlands, and I don't know why they're here. They have no place here. They have no relation to our society, but they're here because of American cultural dominance. And the nationalists here, especially the younger ones, also take a lot of their talking points from the American scene. And it doesn't apply here. It doesn't work here. It's a different context. And more than the, anything else, it's extremely counterproductive the way they conduct themselves. Because... Nationalism should be a self-evident message of self-preservation and self-interest that could normally just appeal logically to a substantial part of the population, especially the working and middle class. And continuously shouting about Jews and aggressively promoting homosexuality and yelling racial slurs at strangers. How does this normalize national thinking? How does this appeal to normal people? How does this appeal to anyone who has something to offer. This is all for dysfunctional people. Now, we aren't perfect either. We've got Amsterdam, and Amsterdam needs to be sunk into the marker mirror. And we have our own wignets too. And we have our own drama and infighting. But to my no knowledge, there has never been an incident in the Dutch nest movement where we were divided over whether we should support wife beaters or people who stream wearing a pink tutu and sucking, sucking on dildos. That's never happened. And I can't think of anyone in the European scene who is as counterproductive or as big of a clown as these people. Even someone like Sargon of Akkad, who wouldn't really be called a nationalist, and who made quite a clown of himself during his UKIP campaign, is still trying to be a more serious pe person, trying to appeal to a broader public, even though he's not very good at it. He's not actively trying to be edgy and 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 signaling really bad messages so why are people surprised when I say I want to strongly dissociate from the Americans on all levels can you really blame me I mean this is the quality of what they put out this is the people that are at the forefront of their movement these are all the most visible website streamers people figureheads I mean just think of Richard Spencer's wife beating as well and I mean there are so few normal Americans in the nationalist movement who have a prominent position. It, yeah. There's not really a benefit for us in the Netherlands or in Europe to make alliances with them. And more practically speaking, anyway, what does working together even really mean? Because to my ears, this sounds just like an abstract platitude. There already is practically no cooperation between groups within any given country. Everyone knows the movement's divided. Everyone in their own country knows they, that there's all this dissent. I mean, uh, the Brits have, have infighting, the Swedes have infighting, we Dutch have infighting, the Germans have all these different groups of infighting. So we can't even get our movement together on a national level. I mean, the Americans are infamous for their infighting. But then we're supposed to, to cooperate, you know, internationally across boundaries. What does that even mean? What does it in a practical sense mean that we're going to be cooperating and building an international movement? In my experience, and I've been at this a few, some, some years now, it has never meant anything more than sometimes visiting, visiting each other's conferences or a speaker going across the Atlantic to another conference. And it's never much more than that. It's never a material benefit to either side. So it doesn't really mean anything, practically speaking, this idea of white solidarity. It's just... It's just a platitude, it seems to me. And if we want cooperation, then working with our immediate neighbors is far more practical. Working with the, for us with the Anglos or the Germans or the Swedes, much more achievable, shorter distances, you know. We're already within a, much, uh, within a political and cultural and economic framework together. 
America is very far away. America is very different culturally. America exports all these dumb ideas. So if we want to work together with the Yanks at any point, well, then they're going to have to have something to offer other than dysfunctional people who do live streaming for a living and don't really build anything other than that. I mean, we've got... Every European country has a better organized movement than the Americans, to, to my view. I've never seen American nationalist trade unions. There's very little in the way of, of political parties. And as, in as far as there are political parties, these are just fringe groups, not actually groups with, with seats in, in parliament or seats in municipal halls, which is something that does exist in most European countries, especially in the East, but even in the West. You've got small nationalist groups with seats, and with, pop, with some popular support. And some of these are more li liber liberal, but there are genuine hardline nationalists as well, the, especially in Eastern Europe. So the Americans just don't have much to offer except bad ideas. So why would we associate with them when this is their output? Well, that's what I have to say on this. And um, this is just me expressing exasperation with Americans, but I'm going to try and contain my autism or yanks now f moving forward. I'm going to try and talk about this less because it's really just counterproductive to my own to my own ideas, productivity and output. So, yeah, that that's that.